Thank you, Michel. Good morning. I was asked to discuss with you which preoperative regimen in rectal cancer. And in order to do so, I used the recently published guidelines by our previous presenter, the ESMO guidelines, which were published in Annals of Oncology last year. After the publication of these guidelines, there was also Eureka, which is a consensus conference on the treatment of colon and rectal cancer. And this consensus actually is very much in agreement with the ESMO guidelines, especially in the pre-op setting. In the post-op setting regarding adjuvant treatment, there are some differences between the ESMO guidelines and the Eureka guidelines, where Eureka stratifies more compared to ESMO, but this is not the topic of my talk. I will concentrate on pre-op treatment. So what do the guidelines suggest? Well, that for the initial staging of rectal cancer, we need MRI. We need MRI to locate the primary tumor, to do the T-staging, to judge on sphincter infiltration, on mesorectal fascia involvement, and on nodal staging. For T-staging, the early stages, T1, endoscopic ultrasound is superior to MRI. Regarding nodal staging, it was presented by Dr. Bates. MRI doesn't perform all that well with a sensitivity and a specificity between 60 and 70%. The location of the primary tumor in the rectum is an important factor that we should decide upon when uh, deciding on which treatment to follow. And the rectum is divided into three parts. We have the low rectum, the mid rectum, and the high rectum. And depending on what reference level we use, the distances are a bit different. If we use a rigid proctoscopy, a low seated tumor is defined as a tumor up to five centimeter from anal verge, a mid seated tumor from more than five to 10 centimeter, and a high seated tumor from what than 10 up to 15 centimeter. If we use MRI, then the anal rectal junction is used as the reference level, and then a low seated tumor, it goes up to four centimeters, a mid seated tumor from more than four to eight, and a high seated from more than eight up to 12. What are the parameters defining treatment strategy? Well, the local tumor extension, the location of the tumor in the rectum, nodal staging, mesorectal fascia involvement, extramural invasion, and venous invasion. And when we take these parameters into account, we can tailor the treatment to the individual patient. Initial staging and mesorectal fascia involvement are important parameters, but also it is very important that the treatment decision should be taken by a multidisciplinary team. Now, what is then the treatment strategy in rectal cancer? Then we can divide it, rectal cancer in three subgroups. We have the very early tumors, we have the resectable tumors, and we have the non-resectable tumors. For the very early tumors, as was discussed by the previous speaker, we use the Kikuchi classification and the Haggit classification and SM1 and SM2 tumors are candidates for, TM, for TEM surgery. These tumors are at low risk if they are well or moderately differentiated, if there is no venous or lymphovascular invasion. And you see on the bottom of the slide the risk of having positive lymph nodes related to the Kikuchi classification. SM1 and SM2 have a very low risk of having positive lymph nodes. SM3 has a risk up to 23%. So what do the guidelines, the ESMO guidelines suggest? Well, for early tumors, T1, SM1, 2, and 0, we can go for local excision, TEM procedure. If there are poor prognostic factors, such as more than SM2, moderately or poorly differentiated, perineural invasion or vascular invasion present, then we should go for TME surgery. In case the patient refuses or is medically inoperable, then we can also choose for post-op chemoradiation. What about the non-resectable can cancers? Well, 
Here it's easy. These patients should go for preoperative chemo radiation. And this is also, as is suggested by the ESMO guidelines, tumors that are T3, T4 with a positive mesorectal fascia or with positive lateral lymph nodes, those patients should go for pre-op chemo radiation on long course, followed by a long interval, followed, if possible, by TME surgery. And then we move to the resectable cancers. And here it becomes a bit more complicated. Do we need preoperative radiotherapy in these patients? Do we need preoperative chemo radiotherapy in these patients? Or should we go for upfront surgery? And then it's important where the tumor is located in the rectum. For a high seated tumor, the surgical procedure to be performed can be a partial mesorectal excision, at least five centimeters below the lower border of the tumor, or a TME procedure. If we look in the randomized trials that we have available and we look at tumor height, these are the results for the Swedish rectal cancer trial, we see that for the high seated tumors, 11 centimeters or higher, there is no significant benefit of a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery. The same goes for the Dutch TME trial. If we there look at tumors that are located 10 centimeter or higher, there is no significant benefit of a short course of preoperative radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery. The MRC trial, however, shows that patients that have a tumor located 10 to 15 centimeters above the anal margin have a significant benefit of a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery. These patients have significantly less local recurrences in the MRC trial. So for high seated tumors, the question is still open. What about tumors located in the mid-rectum. Uh, the, these are the results from the Australian trial where patients with T3 rectal cancer were randomized between a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery or a long course of chemo radiation, a long interval followed by surgery. And in this trial, there was no statistically significant difference between the two arms for tumors that were located in the mid-rectum. So, from this trial, we can conclude that 5 times 5 is equivalent to a long course of chemoradiation followed by surgery for mid-seated tumors. What about low-seated tumors? For these tumors, we can choose between a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery or a long course of chemoradiation followed by TME surgery, surgery or an APR if there is no adequate distal clearance if this, or if the sphincter function is poor. But can we aim for sphincter preservation in low-seated tumors? If we then look at the balance between preoperative chemoradiation or a short course of preoperative radiotherapy, we can say that a long course of radiotherapy has the advantage that it is possible to combine with chemotherapy. And we know from the ERTC trial and the FFCD trial that the combination of chemoradiation is superior to radiation alone. Because of the long interval after a long course of chemoradiation, we clearly see more downsizing and downstaging at the time of surgery, and this can help us to improve sphincter preservation. Acute toxicity is less with a short course of radiation because patients are operated before they can suffer from acute toxicity due to the radiotherapy. Compliance is better with a short course, and a short course is less costly than a long course of chemoradiation. We have the results of the Polish trial available. The Polish trial had as primary endpoint sphincter preservation, and the Polish trial included resectable T3 and T4 tumors that were located in the low rectum. And if you look at the results of this trial, there was no significant difference between a short course followed by immediate surgery versus a long course followed by a long interval followed by surgery. But 
If we look at, at tumor downsizing, there was a significant improvement in tumor downsizing in patients treated with a long course followed by a long interval. So this looks like the surgeon that decided upfront and did not change his mind even after a good response to pre-op treatment. There is another study that looked into sphincter preservation and that is the Lyon trial where T2, T3 low rectal cancers were randomized between external beam radiation, 39 gray in three fractions, versus ex external beam radiation followed by a boost with contact therapy. And in this trial, there was a significant improvement in sphincter preservation for those patients that were treated with the contact therapy boost. So, what do the guidelines tell us? Well, for resectable tumors located in the middle or lower third of the rectum, if it is a T3A or B, and this was explained by Dr. Bates, so less than five millimeter invasion into the mesorectal fat, N0, and a negative mesorectal fascia, for these patients, we have the three options open. We can go straight to surgery, we can go for a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery, or we can go for a long course of chemo radiation followed by surgery. If the tumor is more than T3B, and if, but with a mesorectal fascia that is negative, we have the option between a short course of radiotherapy followed by immediate surgery or a long course of chemo radiation followed by TME. Now, if we look into the response to pre-op radiotherapy, pre-op chemo radiotherapy, we see that we have good responders and these good responders can have pathological complete remission in up to 30% of the cases after chemo radiation. And here we can question whether we can go for organ preservation, but this should not be done outside clinical trials. And then we have the poor responders. And for these patients, standard chemo radiation is in insufficient and we should look into treatment intensification. So is there a role for treatment intensification in rectal cancer? This is an overview of the different phase three trials that looked into treatment intensification by adding oxaliplatin in the pre-op setting. You can see here that the primary endpoint of these four trials is different. Only the German trial and the PETAC-6 trial look at disease-free survival as primary endpoint while the French study looks at pathological complete remission and the Italian study at overall survival. What you can also see is that the pre-op schedule differs somewhat between the different trials and that the cumulative oxaliplatin dose administered preoperatively is the lowest in the German trial. If we then look at the adjuvant chemo in the Italian study, it's 5-FU based, the French it's up to the center's preference. In the German trial, it's modified FOX, while in PETAC-6, patients continue in the arm they were randomized to preoperatively, either capecitabine alone or capecitabine with oxaliplatin. And the main first results of these trials are rather disappointing, except for the German trial, where there was an improvement in pathological complete remission rate, but no more toxicity. And this is the design of the RAPIDO trial, which is currently ongoing. And here patients with high-risk rectal cancer are either randomized to the standard arm, which is long-course chemo radiation, an interval of five weeks, surgery, and then further adjuvant chemotherapy. And the study arm is a short course of radiotherapy, five times five, followed by six cycles of full-dose chemotherapy followed by surgery. And the idea behind this study is that the major problem for these patients is distant metastasis. And so by starting with chemotherapy at full dose as early as possible, this might improve disease-free survival. We also have the Danish colorectal cancer group study, a phase three randomized trial that looked into radiotherapy dose escalation in the pre-op setting. 
and they randomized patients between standard chemo radiation versus standard chemo radiation followed by an HDR brachy boost to 10 gray in two fractions. And if you look at the results from this phase three trial, we see that higher radiation dose increases the rate of major response by 50% in T3 tumors. And the endorectal boost is feasible with no significant increase in toxicity or surgical complications. But the ultimate future for these patients lies in the combination of all different omics technologies that we should integrate into one patient model and in that way tailor our treatment towards the individual patients with rectal cancer. Thank you.